I want to introduce our guest, uh, Peter Nao, CEO of OnePass, and also Satcher Sergey, Lead Analyst, Mobile PC Man. Welcome. So hello everybody, I'm <laughs> Sasha Segan, the uh, lead analyst for mobile at uh, PC Mag. We are a major US uh, technology uh, publication. And I'm here with Pete Lau, the CEO and founder of OnePlus. OnePlus is a unique device manufacturer. And uh, I, I can tell you a little story that happened just this morning to explain part of why OnePlus is so unique. We were checking in, we were getting our badges for this conference, and I'm standing waiting for some other people to do some paperwork, and a young man comes up to me, and he looks at my phone, and he says with wide eyes, OnePlus 6? And I said, yeah, I'm carrying a OnePlus 6. And he shows me his phone. He's, I have a OnePlus 6 too. What do you like most about the OnePlus 6? And this guy was not a plant. This guy was not a ringer. This guy did not come from OnePlus. He had a badge. It had a completely different company on it. I know the OnePlus people. He was not one of them. He just saw another OnePlus user and connected. And that's a level of connection that I don't see with a lot of other brands. And so, um, and so I want to talk to you, Pete, a little bit here about how you create that love in your users and how you create that passion for the brand and for the devices. And OnePlus has really been driven over the years by your community, by the faithful community. So how do you maintain that connection even as you've done, you know, now half a dozen devices? It's not a new brand anymore. How do you keep that passion going among the users? Uh, so the community culture is a uh, part of our core genetic makeup, and in looking at, for example, the recent launch of the OnePlus 6, we had pop-ups all over the world with uh, some of them having over a thousand participants come and line up very early to be the first to get their hands on the device. And so across the world, over 15,000 people came out to be the first to get these devices at the pop-up. So there's a real strong community culture there. Yeah, I remember actually uh, seeing the OnePlus 2 launch. And I was amazed because I went to the OnePlus 2 uh, pop-up in Times Square. And there were people lined up around the tent, like in concentric circles. I had never seen anything like it before at a device launch that wasn't Apple. And so you have the pop-ups, but the pop-ups are uh, momentary. The pop-ups mm -hmm. just happen for a little while. So how do you maintain that community connection and keep that sense over the longer period of time? Uh, uh yeah, this has actually been the case since the start. Uh, like I said, the community culture is a part of our core genetic makeup. And, uh, you know, it's not just something we say. I even personally spend an hour or more of my time each day engaging with our communities online and then trying to speak with people whenever possible online. And that's just something that's uh, at the center of what we do. So now you're engaging with your community. You're, you are personally immersed in this online community. You're listening to the community. But I, I think there's an interesting difference between listening to the community and doing whatever the community says. 
Um, and I think one good example of that is uh, with the display on the OnePlus 6. Uh, the OnePlus 6 has uh, a notch at the top of the display. And I remember before the launch, uh, this flood of sentiment on Twitter among the OnePlus fans against that. But then once OnePlus came out with the device, it wasn't a problem. And uh, the OnePlus 6 has sold, I think, faster than any OnePlus phone before. Uh, the fans love it. Uh, they love the speed and the performance. How do you know when to follow a community suggestion and when to say that's not what people really want? Uh, 但我们有一个方法就是我经常跟产品经理讲那我说那我给你一个更轻薄的手机this is something that definitely requires a skill and ability built up over time in working with products and in engaging in a lot of communication with our users. So what we need to do is ask why. Ask why and ask why again to get to the root of what it is that they're really asking. So if we look at the example of users asking for a 4,000 milliamp battery, that ask goes out and what that would mean for device design implication would be a much thicker device. Uh, so that would be what we see as a trade-off versus the right thickness of device and then the longevity of all-day battery usage. So at the core of that ask, we must get to why, the why, why, why. And the core of that ask, for example, is that there's a need for longer uh, battery life, battery longevity. Like <laughs> 我说你们现在是用的Note with the notch as a great example, we tried to be proactive in communicating about what the notch means and how it's the limitations of technology available. And so I also asked on Twitter to our community about their usage of what we have is called hide the notch feature, which displays your notifications but hides the actual notch. And the majority of feedback were that people were still utilizing the full screen display. So um, it's this, candid communication that helps uh, the community understand when we're making changes such as that. And now, part of delivering that, you know, as, as you've been making these decisions, I've, I've heard people around OnePlus describe you as the chief product manager and that you have very, very close attention to the physical details of the device. And I'm hoping that you can show me and show the audience a physical detail on the OnePlus 6 that you really obsessed about. What is, uh, where, where do the tiny details really matter physically? Hmm,的确，可能在一家最大的产品经理可能就是我了。因为我是做产品做了差不多二十年，呃，从以前做蓝光到后面做手机，我基本就是公司的最大的产品经理。所以我有时候跟我们的团队开玩笑说，我说。我们公司的产品经理很幸福 
，可能我会利用用所有公司资源都我可以掌控，所以可以推动这些好的想法去落地。呃，我基本上会参与到所有的细节的设计。Uh, it's true. I am actually seen as a chief product manager, and this has been the case of experience built up over time since my background at Blu-ray and then on into founding OnePlus. And so with our product teams, I often remind them of how lucky they are to have a CEO that understands product. Um, but that's key in being able to personally take part in the uh, iteration and the consideration of each detail in building the device and bringing the device forward. 比如说这个，呃，这个后盖，我经常会发布会，我经常会讲这个弧度的问题。我每一次调整这个这个弧度，可能就是一个零点一毫米，但是我们要调差不多半年的时间。就我每天会拿到这个办公室去看着，四十五度角去看。如果我看一个月还看不腻的话，我基本上这个产品我就啊、呃、靠谱了，就可以通过。因为每每调个零点一毫米，这个后盖的这个光影的感觉都是不一样的。For example, in looking at the back curvature of the device, uh, I will spend much time looking at it from different angles, 45 degree angles, <laughs> and observing how 0.01 millimeter differences in design of that back curvature impact the overall total design. So it's with that amount of time and attention spent to what are seemingly small details, you can get the final back curvature just right. <laughs> 手机，我们当时我们一开始我们就说，必须要经得起时间的考验。你不能拿着手机，有些手机做的很炫，但是你可能看个几天就没什么意思。Yeah, so this this requires a true, legitimate, close interaction with the product to get to the root of these different details and ultimately bring out that great best in design. Now, in terms of software. Uh, the, you've said the philosophy of the OnePlus 6 has been to be burdenless, which of course raises the question, why are smartphones a burden? What is the burden you're trying to lift? Um, this is very much at the core of our philosophy, and it's in looking at simple things like the experience and having it be as lag-free and as smooth as possible and not having anything such as ads or disruptive experience that are brought in and forced upon the user. So we want to try to have a lightness, a flow, a smoothness, a, free, a freedom to the experience uh, that extends throughout the use of the device. Now, when you talk about, when you talk about a, a light and free user experience, that, that actually makes me think of uh, it makes me think of how you're moving from direct uh, user sales online to working more with carriers. Uh, you've been very successful with some carriers. I know you're very successful with Elisa in Finland. Yeah. Um, you're, you're moving into more geographies there. But then how do you balance the uh, demands or requests of carriers as your customers with the requests of the end users when they might be different and when the carriers may want to add things that uh, the end users may not be so comfortable with. Uh, I think the most important thing is that we need to maintain the value of the user's value. It's a good experience for the user. So, of course, today we have a lot of users. We have also worked with a lot of users in the world. But we have a goal to change the value of the user's value. 比如说我们的轻快、流畅、简洁，但是我不能因为说要跟运营商合作，然后里面去加很多的应用，然后改变我们很多的这个操作的这个习惯，这个是我们的呃坚持的一个习惯，呃，坚持的一个原则吧。但至少我们从呃最近我们跟运营商的合作来看，我觉得大家还是有共同的这种呃理解的，因为我说如果我改变了我们的这些呃优点，那一加就不是一加。那我相信，对运营商来讲，我们也没有，也没有价值，所以最后沟通下来，其实我觉得都挺好。所以最后核心还是要
In working and communicating with carriers, we think it's important to persist in the principles behind what makes one plus one plus. And now we are working and engaging with a lot of carriers overseas in Europe and North America. And what we want to continue to reemphasize is that making sure one plus stays one plus, and by doing that, it will ensure greater carrier success with our products. So this means you know, limiting ads, limiting bloatware, and creating this common understanding about what makes this product experience great. Uh,可能很多用户想都知道这个手机很好,但是摸不到,所以我们现在在欧美也跟不少的运营商在开展合作,我相信也能够给我们用户一个更好的企业。so at the same time, we're working very much on expanding carrier partnership in EU and North America to improve the offline in-store experience and access to our devices. Because we know there are a lot of users or community members or extended uh, audiences who've heard of our products but have not been able to see uh, the products in person. So working with carriers is a great chance to improve on that ability and uh, have more people be able to access the product. So also looking forward to the future of OnePlus, um, there's a lot of talk about 5G at this conference. Uh, we just saw a presentation from China Mobile where they, they talked about the future of 5G. And is, does 5G open up near-term opportunities for OnePlus? Is this something that you want to get into quickly, or is it something that uh, you think you might hold back on for a while, see what 5G does before deciding how it will improve your devices? Uh, 5G, I think, is a technological development. I think it will be a very big change in the future of our human life. Of course, I can first give a quick comment. We are in 5G, we are in 5G, because we are in 5G, because we are in 5G, 这个进行了战略性的合作，呃，我们会成为第一梯队的这个推出五G终端的手机品牌。呃，坦白讲，可以在欧美，因为现在很多的运营商也在跟我们在洽谈怎么第一时间推出五G的产品。我觉得这个对
Well, that's great to hear. We're just about out of time, but I look forward to returning to the stage with you maybe next year, and we'll talk about uh, your experiences with uh, 5G phones. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot.